couple months ago, I had an idea to set up a table on the streets of Toronto and offer free 3D printed repairs. I was super excited about this idea, so I immediately started planning it, but pretty soon I realized that there were some major challenges with doing this on a street corner, and that if I set this up in an existing business with power and protection from the elements, I would have a much better chance of success. So I did that twice at the Maker Bean Cafe. Those events went great. There are two videos about them on my channel and it was amazing, but I was still hungry for the original idea. And then someone reached out that changed everything. This is the EcoFlow Delta II. It is a portable power station that has 1,024 watt hours of capacity. That should be plenty of power to run my 3D printer, laptop, and any other accessories I want to add onto this off-grid 3D printing station. One of the really cool things about working with EcoFlow is that Van Neistat, when he did his repair station, also worked with EcoFlow, and he was my inspiration for this project. First step, let's make a table. I saw you in the camera monitor and I was like seeing a ghost. So my dream is to take this thing off road, maybe use it to offer repairs in a public park. So I picked up these huge pneumatic casters and hopefully these plus the solar panel and the battery will allow me to go just about anywhere. All right, here we go, moment of truth. I feel like this thing is gonna be super heavy. Oh yeah, it's beefy. Let's see if we flip it like that. Oh yeah, there she goes. What? Oh, that is nice! Wow, this thing rolls smooth. Woo! I don't know what was wiggling like that. Okay, my turn. I'm gonna show you what I want to do with it. I'm ready for my Mai Tai. Okay, just don't let me hit anything. I won't. Ah! <laughs> oh, you're right, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, I want to try to push it with the one wheel. Warp speed. If there's not weight on the four wheels, they kind of like go all crazy. It's like, it's like when a shopping cart, you know, when the wheel goes like that. All right, we gotta go quick because there's a car coming. Ah! <laughs> there's a bush. Morley, there's a, there's a thing. There's a stop, stop. I got it. What are we gonna hit? <laughs> oh, now my butt's facing it. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> To protect the printer from the elements, I'm gonna build an IKEA LAC enclosure. This open source design uses two IKEA LAC side tables. I got both of these for 15 bucks on Facebook Marketplace, some 3D printed parts, and plexiglass to make a simple, easy to build enclosure. I downloaded the files from printables.com and I will link that in the description. I printed the pieces from PETG and now we're ready to build. So before putting the top on, I'm just gonna drop the acrylic sides into place. 
This is some three millimeter acrylic that I cut to size. So that should just drop in like this to the little pieces in the corner. Beautiful. Now I can put the top pieces on, slot into the acrylic, and then the piece for the back corner. This piece has a cord slot, which I'm gonna use to run a power bar. So this is actually the bottom, so this cord doesn't have to be super long. I think that's okay. And now we can sandwich it in place with the top. This is such a good design. Shout out to the people who made this happen. Beautiful. Now we can flip it right side up. And the power bar lies on the bottom. So these pieces will form the doors. They just slide into the 3D printed hinges here. And to make sure they're nice and secure, I'm gonna epoxy them into place. I feel like the ideal container for mixing epoxy would be one of those cone water cups. That way it all falls to the bottom because whenever you mix it in one of these paper cups or on some masking tape, it always spreads out. But then you would need like one of those cone stands like at an ice cream shop to keep it in place. You know, I think this would be a, not, this isn't even an invention. This is just using <laughs> those cups for something else. All right, so put just a bit of epoxy into the 3D printed hinge and get it on the top one as well. Now I'll take my acrylic, make sure that the two hinges are lined up and push it into place. I'm gonna put a little shim in the front just to make sure it doesn't sag as it cures. Now we should maintain that gap. All right, now to make the closure, there are these end pieces that go on and these are a really tight fit and aren't really gonna be bearing any weight. So I don't think we actually need epoxy over here. We can just stick with the pressure fit. And these little pieces on the end will hold magnets for a magnetic closure. Like this. And if these end up slipping off, we can always epoxy them in place later on. To make the closure, we have to attach some magnets into these cavities and drop a magnet in. Right, so we'll see which way the magnet is. So we need to embed it in here like that. And again, because it was such a tight fit, I don't know if we actually need any epoxy. So I'm gonna see if I pressure fit this, if that will be sufficient. Come on, fingers. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that magnet is not going anywhere. Since the doors hang a little low, I added some spacers here so that these line up. So check the magnet polarity, press it into the hole. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. That works so well. Woo! Now I can put the handles on and I don't have screws that are quite tiny enough. So I'm just gonna epoxy them in place and I think it should be fine. Lovely. We're gonna use this leg to make a spool holder. And just because we can, I'm gonna use the EcoFlow to power the table saw. So here is the cord running from the table saw into the EcoFlow so you know it's not fake. What happened? Okay, so it's on. Wait a second, where's the manual? Why isn't it going? Oh, we gotta turn AC. <laughs> There's a switch to turn the AC power on and off. Whoops. All right, <laughs> now we got power out. Plugging in. Now, moment of truth. Here we go. Let's go, let's go. Not a problem. Now, since these are hollow, we can press these 3D printed pieces into place. Ah, oh, perfect fit. So then the spool holder will go like that with a dowel in between. 
and the filament goes right into the guide hole. All right. Having another person here would really be helpful. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Now we're in business. Okay, there's one. There we go, okay. Lovely. Oh. I think right here will be the perfect spot for the EcoFlow, so next step is to build a shelf for it so it's held securely in place. And yes, I'm still using the EcoFlow to power the table saw. I'm an Oh, perfect fit. It's got this nice rubberized bottom, so I think it's pretty secure in there, but if it's moving around too much while this thing is rolling, I can always add some bungee cords on either side. That's great. Nice, that's not going anywhere. So before testing out the off-grid 3D printing station, I wanted to charge up the EcoFlow and check out how fast this thing is charging. 47 minutes to get to 100% off of just a standard 120 volt outlet. This thing is zooming. All right, let's test this thing. All right, let's test it. Daddy got the off-roading wheels. Yeah, off-roading successfully to start. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna have to do a little spin around. Let's get a nice bum shot. And just remember that you're mic'd up. I'm 100% aware. We got some drifting going on. I wonder <laughs> if it's easier if I pull it. That's pretty good. This thing needs like uh, lights on it to show when it's stopping, when it's going left and right. All right, everything's looking good so far. Nothing is shifting. Oh, curb. <laughs> I feel like having uh, only two of the wheels be spinny casters would have been easier. It would have been easier to control. Street crossing successful. Ah. <laughs> the sidewalk is a little tilted here, so it's trying to it's trying to go off into the road, but I won't let it. All right, I think we're in the clear. The hardest part is behind us. Oh, it keeps wanting to go that way. I think it's tilted towards the road for drainage. More like you look at me? Nice. I should have put some handles on the sides as well. Like a glove. Uh-oh. <laughs> all right, we got it. It's all good. Okay. It's just like a really big shopping cart. It's like an art to steering this thing. Morley, asking for myself, do we need to go this quickly? <laughs> I was just really feeling it. Okay. All right, the hater said it was gonna tip over when we hit grass, so it's time to prove them wrong. All right, moment of truth. All right, we are officially off-roading. A little bit more to your left. Stop, a little bit more to your right. <laughs> oh my God. Stop. A little bit to your left. You're definitely messing with me. I'm locking it in place. Okay. All right, let's set this thing up. Bungee cords were definitely a clutch purchase. I am so sweaty. <laughs> Open up the ventilation on, on my pants. Vent your pa vent the my pants. pant ventilation. Can you, can you see that? Ooh, I'm gonna plug in the camera battery, get all my charging happening. Oh, perfect. I can charge the microphone case. 
Oh, I'm also gonna charge my phone. Space right there. <laughs> I'm so happy I went with a tabletop this big. Like there's so much more room than when we did it at the Maker Bean. Like full 3D printer over here, got a cutting mat, computer. Oh, you know what I need? I need a caliper holder right here. Then I will be fully set up. First print in the off-grid station, let's do this. Ooh, I love the shot through the case. All right, one hour print. Woo! Inaugural off-grid 3D print. You should like bash a bottle of champagne or something. <laughs> that would be awesome, I should go get one. Great. Love me some caliper holders. Love me some good first layer fusion. Shout out to the enclosure. All right, let's see. Let's see your skills. Oh, nice. Pro, pro dismount. All right, so that's gonna go right here. Oh, you know what I just realized? This thing has screw holes. I didn't bring my drill. Okay, I need to go back and get the drill. <laughs> Hang on. All right, I'll be back. Keep your helmet on. <laughs> it's printing really well. It's almost done the first layer. Nice. Look at that adhesion quality. Ooh, I wanna see how the EcoFlow is doing. How much power has it used? So I think when we got here, it was at like- 97, I took a shot. Okay, so it's been charging like four devices, running the lights and the printer. That's pretty good. 91, five hours to go. Output 158 watts and counting. I think there's enough outlets to also charge the one wheel. <laughs> Oh yeah. All right, we got every outlet in use. I mean, I do have a power bar in there with four more outlets. Oh, and we also got all the USB ports as well. This is a pretty pleasant setting to 3D print some stuff. Yeah, this is lovely. I'm still waiting for my Mai Tai. <laughs> all right, the print is at like 60%, 65%, and the EcoFlow with like 10 things plugged into it is still at 75% battery. We got the one wheel, laptop, the lights, two phones, my DJI mic. No, just one phone. Oh, just one Don't phone. Don't over. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not gonna overstate like, the benefits. On. Oh, my camera battery is plugged in as well. This thing is crushing it. Forgot about the train. Professional. <laughs> Spoke too soon. The support material out. It's coming out so smooth. I know, I got my support material settings figured out. Look at that. There it is. There we go. First off grid 3D print, a success. All right, first test of the off grid 3D printing station, a success. I'm gonna swivel around because this is a lot easier to go from the front. <laughs> Everything pretty much went perfectly. Oh my gosh, going down this hill is a little challenging. <laughs> Need to like go from the front, there we go. Gonna guide it from here. In four days, I'm gonna set up in a local park and offer free 3D printed repairs. That will be the next video and hopefully we'll be doing it with a solar panel. So we should have plenty of power to go the whole day. I mean, the EcoFlow lasted plenty, but with the solar panel, I think we'll be good for a full day of repairs. If you would like to see what I'm up to behind the scenes, consider supporting this channel on Patreon. That will give you exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page. To learn more about that, head on over to patreon.com slash morleykurt. And I would like to give a special thank you to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Even there's a biker behind you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. All right, there's a bus shelter. <laughs>You know, it'd be really good if I was like good at one wheeling and I could one wheel beside you. Yeah, that's why you gotta learn. That's the only reason. Getting a lot of smiles from people. Yeah, it's almost as good as having a dog. <laughs> we should bring Abby next time. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll bring her down to Christy Pitts because we'll be yeah. there for a while. Definitely.